A lot of people are watching along with us. Things are going to be taken a lot further. It does keep the flow really, really nicely, which makes it a show that was really ahead of its time. Where's that petrified eyeball at now? Who's had it last? Macy is amazing, and she doesn't care about what other people think about her. Don't you feel like maybe Dodie represents the instinctive animal ugly part of us? I might have just been having a bad day when I gave it the mask. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Where in Between, the podcast that discusses about every single episode of As Told by Ginger once a week. I am Patricia. And I'm Casey. And unfortunately, Ashley is not joining us because she is currently at a baseball game, but we miss her nonetheless, and I'm sure she'll be joining us in the next podcast. But we have a bonus podcast for you guys, and this is one that a lot of you guys have been so excited about. Your questions came flooding in like crazy. (laughs) So over the past couple of months, we have had a lot of fantastic people who have been cast members on the show. We interviewed Aspen, we interviewed Jackie, we interviewed Ken, but now we finally got a hold of the main protagonist herself, Ginger. Family, we have Melissa Disney. Melissa, welcome to We're in Between. Thank you so much, all of you guys. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not my real voice. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Nailed it. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. Thank you. All right, so um, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi. So, yeah, uh, right before we um, discuss about uh, all the as told by Ginger stuff, so yeah, we, we'd love to know uh, where did you get your influences for acting? Oh, gosh. Let's see. I would say a lot of musical theater growing up. I started when I was like six. I started doing a lot of plays and musicals. And so it's fun because you get to do so many different kinds of things doing theater. And um, I think it really prepared me for animation. I remember that you were... In not in the same one, but like in a similar situation with Aspen in which she took a lot of theater as well. Yeah, we were actually in the same company. Mm-hmm. Are you are you telling me you're a cyt as well? Same here. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> I was actually in their very first class. Wow. I was in one of the early ones in uh, Illinois, in the Chicago area. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they're all over now. That's great. Yep. Wow, that's nuts. Yeah. I know, it's funny, because Aspen and I, we ended up playing a lot of the same parts. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun. At one point, I played a tree, a singing tree. Aw, that's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what was this play for, anyway? Was this, like, for, like, an Arbor Day play or something? Uh, the singing tree one? Yeah. Um... I almost want to say it was like, gosh, could it have been like Cinderella or Babes in Toyland? Oh, I don't know. know. I think just... it might have been Cinderella because I think Aspen was mentioning about that. Right, Casey? Yeah, she, uh, I think that was the one she auditioned for. No, I think it was Sound of Music. Did you play a music. singing tree too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a little too coincidental, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be hilarious. You know, it's one of those parts where they have you play like 10 different roles. No, I think mostly sure. like my favorites were... Uh, Maria and West Side Story and Lisa and Sound of Music, Dorothy nice. and Wizard of Oz, those kinds of things. Oh, awesome. They were my fit. I'm like only yeah. naming the leads, but that singing tree was fun too. <laughs> That's what you do. It's like a resume, right? You just, yeah, move it all up to the top. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah exactly. You put yeah, that on your resume. You know, you play Ginger, you were the, you, yeah. know, you do the voiceover for the Emmys and the Oscars. Singing tree. Mm-hmm. Perfect. 10 out of 10. Yeah, singing tree. <laughs> singing tree, dancing carrot. Yeah, you know, the important oh, That's great. That's great. <laughs> all right, Casey, what do you got? What's your question? So I guess the biggest question that immediately popped in my head for this interview. Did you sort of approach Ginger as narrator any differently than Ginger as the character? Or did it feel like you were just in still living in that same sort of Ginger world? Oh, totally in the Ginger world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I just, I got it so quickly. Like, I just understood it because I had been a big journal writer and keeper for so long. So I just totally, yeah, just try to make it as, mo- as conversational as possible. For sure. So, like, when you were doing Ginger lines that are, like, when she's a narrator or writing in her journal, 
did you approach that any differently than like when you had a scene partner? Not really. I mean, mostly it's just like, who are you talking to? Like as an actor, who are you talking? Are you talking to yourself? Or are you talking to another person? But right. Regardless, you're always talking to someone, even if it's yourself. Sure. Right. <laughs> right. Or the audience or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really think of it too much as an audience. I think I would more think of it as writing Dear Diary, you know, yeah, to like totally. your very special friend that only you know. Now when yeah. um now when auditioning for as told by Ginger, did you audition for anybody else besides Ginger? I think I auditioned for all the girls. Like it was one of those things where they just sent me everything and said yeah, we need this back soon. Just do what you want. <laughs> wow, kind of that's thing. actually pretty interesting because when we spoke to yeah. Aspen and Jackie, um, Aspen didn't, uh, from what I understand, Aspen, the only thing that she was called for was for Dodie. And as for Jackie, she said that she may have auditioned for a few characters like Lois and Courtney. So yeah, auditioning mm. for all the girls. That's fascinating. I really think I did. I, I think so. Um, my agents sometimes will just send me a bunch of stuff and be like, okay, like pick your top five or something if there's a whole group. And I love the challenge of trying to come up with different character voices for all these different people and stuff. But it was so funny how I came up with the whole like raspy ginger sound was that there was a across the street from me where I lived and she was tiny. She was probably like three, four or five years old. And she had the raspiest, cutest voice. Oh, who would that be? <laughs> Is it, I, I can't, I think her name's Phoebe. It's been a long time since I lived there. But she was so darling. And so I, I like to kind of, uh, let's just say imitate people. <laughs> No, it's, a, it's, not, a, it's perfectly not around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's perfectly fine because uh, Jackie did the great. same. Jackie did the same thing for Macy. She said that yep, she knew this. Yep. She knew this friend of hers who was like this uh-huh. goody, um, who was like this pure-hearted Christian girl, and mm-hmm. you know she had like a bit of a na- nasally voice, and so she pretty much imitated <laughs> her. So yeah, it fits perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So I basically just did. I did little Phoebe for Ginger, and I was like, it just worked so perfectly because of the insecurity. And naivete, it was just really sweet. It just, it worked so nice. And then um, when they heard it, they said, like the main writer, Emily, said, I, the second I heard you doing it, I was like, that's my ginger. There is no question. Wow. That's exactly wow. what I want. Yeah. And she was like, she understands the acting. She understands the emotion. Like, there's our ginger. <laughs> so it was really cool. <laughs> that's amazing that's fantastic yeah absolutely that's I, rare I, I when even, that happens uh-uh. <laughs> i even heard in an interview of talking tunes with rob paulson that uh gray delisle griffin uh who was the, eventually the voice of brandon she actually auditioned for ginger as well and then when she heard that right. you were a part of it you know she was like really excited because she's like oh you know melissa disney she's so beautiful and you know she was like great for ginger and then eventually you know when she got the voice for brandon it's like you know and you know she had a lot of fun with it too but yeah uh, uh, apparently it's interesting that gray wanted to be the voice of ginger so yeah it's pretty funny <laughs> i know well so many of us want to do different things oh, I, like, yeah, no absolutely that's and, nice yeah I, I met gray last year and she was so nice <clears throat> yeah she is she's fun yeah she's a lot of fun anyway so um <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm sure that you're. Pr- I'm sure you get this a lot uh, whenever that you're interviewed for something, especially with "As Told by Ginger" related. But I'm sure a lot of people would love to know what was your favorite episode. <laughs> okay. You know, I was thinking about that, and I don't think I have a favorite because I enjoyed the experience so much. So I would say my favorite episode, anything having to do with singing. I loved when <clears throat> she pulled out her guitar and went to camp and. Those were so exciting for me because as a singer-songwriter, I was always trying to get more music into the shows that I was doing. And by the way, I'm a singer, everyone, you know, and I do it and they'd be like, um, you sound too good. Right, right. (laughs) And one time I read online somewhere, which I hardly ever read, like people talking in the chat rooms and stuff, but I read like, ugh. Who sang the very first Ginger theme song? It was terrible. And someone's like, it was Melissa. And they're like, yeah, it was awful. And I'm like, because they told me to be bad. (laughs) Oh, yes, that's right. (laughs) 
Yeah, you. you I remember one. that. Good. Um, Aspen told us this story that, you know, before they got Macy Gray to sing the theme song, they didn't know who they were going to have to sing it. So you sung it and then eventually Cree sung it until mm-hmm. eventually got they got Ma- uh, Macy. And then mm-hmm. um, Aspen even told us that, you know, Dodie and Macy were supposed to sing the theme song as well. So, yeah, I mean... So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, it, it made a lot of sense for Ginger to sing the theme song, you know. Um, you, you know, yeah. So it, it made a lot of sense. I think at that point they were they were trying to get, obviously, more notoriety. And so that's why they were like, oh, Cree's known as a singer-songwriter. She's, you know, going on tour with some people. So they were like, okay, let's get her. And then they were like, oh, we're getting more notoriety. Okay, let's get let's see if we can reach out for a bigger person and the funny thing is i was actually on an airplane with macy gray and they were talking about who they were going to get to do it and i suggested her <laughs> well that's you awesome. you I, suggested macy yeah, gray true. that's interesting I did. because jerry because I, I already did, jerry didn't remember how they got macy celebrity yeah they, they i already knew that they were going celebrity anyway because at, at a certain point in a show when you need more visibility you're just looking for anything you can grab i think as a producer to try and get more big names out there and get more press and everything so unfortunately that's what happens to those of us who are not like the big time celebrities we like we do the work and then the celebrities copy us (laughs) (laughs) i thought it was a cool concept though having different characters sing the theme song and sort of vary it up depending on the episode that's pretty unique I wish that happened more often. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. You know, if it was a Dodie centric episode, have Dodie like, sing the theme song. If it was a Macy centric episode, have Macy sing the theme song. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, totally. That would be great. Yeah. All right, uh, Casey, do you have any other questions? Is there anything? Did, were you, two part question, were you doing voiceover work before, as told by Ginger? And then also. Did Ginger end up in any way, your experience with As Told by Ginger, inform the way you do voiceover work now? Um, I started back in, like, 94, 95. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've been doing it a long time. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand the second half of the question. <laughs> like, I guess, I mean, for your, like, um, like not just voice acting, but, like, uh-huh. specifically voiceover stuff, because Ginger has this sort of, like... You know the diary stuff that's like speaking to herself and in a way to the audience. Did the, did it, your experience with oh. Ginger help you at all with that in the future? Everything leads to the thing. Like he, so the project you're on, especially when it goes, you know, on a long running show, you learn a lot about just how to keep your character sustained over a long period of time, and it's really great. I mean, anything that I do, it's just like another stepping stone to the next thing. Mm-hmm. So I always feel like. I always feel like I'm just learning all the time. And even with auditions, I'm still like kind of playing around and trying new things. And it's, it's really fun. Cause a lot of people don't realize when you're doing character work, sometimes like you can create a voice that works only when she's really happy. But if mm. you try to go to a place where, Oh, suddenly she has to be like really scared or really sad or something. You're like, I can't get to that character. How do I do that? You know, <laughs> It's very right. interesting. So you have to make sure and characters that are very well rounded in your range that you that you know you can do all kinds of different things with. Like some characters, it would be very hard to sing. Right for sure. Yeah, this really weird and dry. <laughs> Hi, yeah. So I have this like a song now. <laughs> like, oh, I am wishing for my love. You know, it's like <laughs> it's just, everything's kind of weird when you have to do it different things with that character so right you have to make sure you can get them well-rounded and it kind of sits and rests and it's meant all techie crap right right <laughs> all right mm-hmm. um my question uh and i and i've asked this to everybody so far uh do you have any funny behind the scenes stories that you like to share with either the cast members or with emily or any of the producers or bo- voiceover directors a lot of people don't know that something really, really awful happened to me while I was doing special by gender. I was in an accident and got electrocuted and literally lost my voice completely. Oh, my, oh my God. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah. Whoa. There was nothing. There was no sound. And plus, I like I was really hurt. So 
I it was in the middle of like a really big season and all this stuff was happening and it, it was just absolutely crazy. I, ha- I ended up having to go to a speech therapist. He gets sick or something. He can't lose his voice, but he has to keep the raspiness so i had found the right kind of woman and she i would get my scripts in advance and she would literally go through line by line and i i literally had to relearn how to talk wow oh that sounds terrible it was so scary so uh, and i was going through like panic and anxiety so all stuff that i never was just it was crazy and it took like two weeks before my voice like really came back and then i just had to relearn how to talk the correct way and so I wouldn't like hurt myself and and I kept it all totally quiet because this business is really really harsh like mm-hmm. if you can't do your job there's probably 10 people out there who can imitate you almost as good and we were under contract negotiations at the time remember when even like friends was up for contract negotiations and they're just like oh well, we'll just recast they're like no you can't just recast friends like what <laughs> I mean, it's so weird. So I thought about the whole thing and very disciplined and I made it back and I'm still doing it today. That's fantastic. That's yeah. that's wonderful to hear. That's I can tell you one other Yeah, yeah, please, please. Oh sorry, what? I said please oh, tell me good. tell us another one. Okay. I, I know people are like, You gotta write a book about this because nobody knows that you like make a living off your voice and you couldn't talk for a while. It's just it's bizarre. Yeah. Um but I at the very end when um, the car- um hold, hold on um casey hasn't seen the yeah. show in its entirety so yeah this is his first time seeing through the show in its entirety so yeah please no spoilers i won't tell you what happens okay but good. i'll just say at the very end we we were all so sad because it kind of ended abruptly right and emily our creator was being pulled in all these different directions because she's such a good writer and she didn't want anybody else to come in and take over her show and her it so and it and like well for me at the end i was like so emotional that during the last scenes they kept having to stop because i would be crying in between like every line Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i was so in this character and in the life of all these characters and these people that we were working with and i was like what so it was emotional for a lot of us but that was that was pretty interesting they're like okay stop again (laughs) it's okay and then i'd see the engineer wiping a tear i'm like okay i'm not the only one Mm. (laughs) Yeah, because we all had such a it was such a heartfelt show. Yeah, Eric told us a similar story in which when they found out that the show was going to be over, it was like you know letting family go off and doing their separate things and yeah, uh, yeah, and apart and of course you know the show kind of ended abruptly. Like there was a whole mon- bunch of behind the scenes things that were going on that even still to this yeah. day we still don't know everything about it's still a mystery but maybe you'll know and there's yeah. actually some somebody who has a question about that so okay. we'll get to that later uh casey do you have any other questions uh i think i'm good to move on to our listener questions i'm sure they'll have some good ideas i hadn't thought of oh yeah there's <laughs> there are so many questions in fact there are so many questions i asked on the forums please one question per person because melissa is very busy <laughs> and we want to make eight sure- months pregnant and eight months wow. pregnant wow yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy because we just announced on the um, uh, a few we about announced a month ago that Aspen was pregnant. So that's crazy. Yeah. I know. I wish we lived on the same coast at least. That would be so oh. great. Oh, so you're oh. in LA. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Aspen is the only one who lives in New York, and well, Eric lives in Paris. But yeah. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the questions. Uh, let's start off with the we're in between forums. Uh, let's start things off with uh, Mr. N. And he asks, hi, Melissa, I have a question. Who is your favorite as told by Ginger character besides Ginger? Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, there's so many. Um, I would say, what? Why am I not remembering his name? Okay, so there's Courtney. Mm-hmm. Uh, can, uh, describe the character. Oh, I don't, Carl. I don't think I should go. Oh, in Hoodsy, there. Hoodsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was a nice Hoodsy Perfect. impression. Did you voice him too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Eric's yeah, favorite. That's that actually that's always cracking me up. Oh, he's great. Yeah, that's Eric's favorite I think character. 
Tress McNeil's like one of my favorites. She's just she she can just do anything. She's hilarious. And I remember her telling me where she kind of got the inspiration for that. And it was somebody friend's son or something. <laughs> just hilarious. Nice. So funny. Gosh, that character. I, he would have been funny to sing this theme song too. Oh, that would have oh, been amazing. Could you imagine? Yeah. If we ever get Tress McNeil on this podcast, which I doubt, we have to have her sing the theme song as Hoodsy. Oh, that would be hysterical. (laughs) All right. Okay, we have another question from B-Dog10, and he asks, Hi, Melissa. Um, In your opinion, who's your favorite? Hi, B-Dog. In your opinion, who is your favorite, Macy or Dodie? You can't pick out of those two. Are you kidding? They're my BFFs. They're both amazing. Um, I just, I, I, I think they're both so funny, and I just how much snot was, was going to be playing around in, <laughs> in the nose of Macy. Like it, there were days where they would just, we'd all just have to stop and laugh because she would get so adnoidal. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. It's funny because pretty much everyone we've interviewed has mentioned exactly that. People cracking up at Jackie as Macy. I love that everyone remembers that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that noise. (laughs) Love it. All right. We have a question from Dylan and he asks, hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I've been an admirer of your work for years and especially as told by Ginger. It's one of the rare shows that I watch with my mom and my grandma. What was your favorite? Aww. What was your favorite line of dialogue you delivered while working on the show? <laughs> oh no! Oh, that's a long time ago. We could give you some options. <laughs> yeah, give me options. I don't know. <laughs> There's the "Hello Stranger" poem. That's a standout. Oh yeah. Okay. You, I can help you recite it. I know the poem by heart. <laughs> yeah, you do? Uh, give me yes, because I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about? I know, I know um, it has- I know it has Hello Stranger in it. That's about all I got. Oh, 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 the Copper Colored Pony song. Yeah, yeah, sing that. That would be awesome. (laughs) That's all I remember. There was was air that smelled like rain. Rain. (laughs) (laughs) What about, do you remember the the Camp Caprice song? Yeah, Aspen sang us that one. Caprice, Caprice, (laughs) Caprice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We don't say mouses, we say meats or something. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay if you don't remember anything. We actually asked Ken to sing a song that he sung at the end credits of one of the episodes, and he didn't remember it either. So that's okay. Oh gosh. Oh man. I need like I need a soundtrack or something. I would totally play that soundtrack. Okay. Right. One of my absolute favorite songs was "It's Courtney." It's Courtney. Who's <laughs> the girl with all the class? It's Courtney. Yeah. I love oh, that yeah. song. And oh, I had my a gosh. friend in a in a play that I was with and I would just sing that song to her all the time and she'd be like what are you talking about (laughs) (laughs) who's the girl in the pink capri it's Courtney I love that song that was a really good one that's that's fun (laughs) okay Uh, we have a question from pink dolphin 92 and she says yay (laughs) like with a bunch of like a whole bunch of exclamation marks out of all the characters on the show ginger is my favorite what was your favorite part about voicing her Uh, just how real she was and how she dealt with so many very realistic um issues that kids go through today and I honestly, I would get to a point where I would take Emily aside and be like, okay, I need to know, did you follow me? Were you there in junior high? Because things that happened to Ginger really happened to me. And I was like, oh, they followed me. How did they know? Like so many things that are just, my gosh, we all went through this. It was very universal and all the insecurities and, oh, it was great. We'd sit around saying, yes, this happened to me. This happened to me too. So she really she really hit it on the head with, with her writing and Eric too. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Loved it. Love the reel. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have one from Kevin K. And he asks, was there anything you didn't like about Ginger or rather something you wish you can change about her? I don't think so. I think I loved everything. Even though she's so nerdy, she was like, all the cool girls wanted to be like her because she was so cool <laughs> all right that's, good that's, get to her friends <laughs> all right that's fair 
All right, one yeah. more spoiler-free question is from Animation Meh, and she says, Hello, Melissa. Welcome to the podcast. I looked through a lot of your roles in TV shows, movies, and video games, and shocked me because I grew up with these shows, such as I Am Weasel and I Carly. How, uh-huh. do, you, how do you feel that there is still a fan base of his Told by Ginger? Oh, I feel fantastic. I, I feel like we need to... Um we need to band together and tell them just bring it back. That's all there is to it. They're bringing yeah. back all kinds of stuff now. Like, yeah. Why is it not coming back? I don't understand because I mean, there's if Hey Arnold can come back. Yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> you know, Hey Arnold's back coming back. Hours. Rockwell's Modern Life is coming back. Invader Zim's coming back. So yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Maybe come on now. If somebody wants to take the helm and be like, bring it back, bring it back. I would help you in some way. I don't know how I could, but I, I would. I would help you because I Ken really actually would love recommended that I should lead the helm, and I was like, I can't. Do I think it. you should. <laughs> Ashley and I will do what we can. Yeah, we'll we'll be behind you, Patricia. Yeah, well, thank and then you. we'll like we'll make you guys like you know associate producers and stuff. Oh, that would <laughs> be so, so sweet. Of, like, all the PR. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Casey can maybe show up in the TV movie playing a piano or something. Sure, I can I can just do like uh busy work for Jared, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right. Well unfortunately, Casey, that's it for the spoiler free questions. But don't worry, there's only a handful of the spoiler question and it's pretty much the same thing. So I'll add you back later, okay? All right. He is Where gone. are you located by the way? I live in Florida. Casey lives in New York and Ashley yeah. um is from Illinois. Uh, so yeah, we're awesome. from different parts of the country, pretty much. Nice. All right, spoiler question time. Okay, we have a question from Heart Lover seventeen seventeen, and she asks, "Hi Melissa, welcome to the podcast. Can you please bring us up to date from that last scene in the wedding frame? What is Ginger Foutley up to nowadays? Thank you so much for participating." <laughs> I wish I could tell you, but I don't know because they didn't they didn't write anymore um well i mean like i know I where mean, I, I would have taken it yeah go ahead please, please. Darren and having a couple kids and then ends up becoming probably like an english teacher and so sharing her wealth of knowledge at the school <laughs> oh she, she basically would be like Ms. Zorsky in a sense yeah yeah she'd go back and share or she'd go i don't know she might work with kids or something become a counselor because she's i just think she's very wise mm, that's really good All right, uh, we have a question from Maria S. And she asks, Hi, Melissa. First of all, I'm a huge As Told by Ginger fan, and Ginger Foutley was my idol when I was younger. At the end of the wedding frame, we see that Darren and Ginger end up married with a daughter. In your opinion, what do you think they ended up naming her? Macy, Dodie, Courtney? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I have no idea. It would be something artistic. Uh, they're both into like music and poetry and that kind of thing. So maybe like Sophia or something. Ooh, I don't know. Sophia's a nice name. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> pretty. Okay. Um, let's see. That's a, that's, yeah, that's a pretty name. All right. Thanks. Um, okay. We have a question from Jordan and he asks, hi, Melissa. I've been a big fan of As Told by Ginger for the first few seasons. And I have a question reflecting back on all those years since the show ended. Where do you think Ginger stands in her relationship with Sasha from Camp Caprice? <laughs> I doubt they see each other anymore, but maybe run into each other at the reunion. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think Sasha moved on. Yeah, he pretty he's much like, did. I mean, you know, he's with that girlfriend Clover and you know kind of into himself. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, that that stuff's <laughs> over. But yeah, I mean <laughs> all right then. Okay, okay, can I tell you something hilarious? Sure, please. Like behind the scenes. Oh yeah, absolutely. When boyfriends would appear for Ginger and stuff, almost all the time they would be they would be kids that were like teens. Aww. And I'd be like <laughs> this girl in her late twenties or early thirty, like hanging out with these teen kids and pretending to be boyfriend girlfriend. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean even that yeah, exactly. I can imagine that being awkward. But you mm-hmm. know, I it's it's I mean, it's it's kind of funny thinking of that. It's like, oh, man, this actor, he's playing my boyfriend, and he's, like, 10 years younger. Wow. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's funny, yeah. Kenny and I still have a very special relationship. Like, we see each other, and we're like, oh, like, it's very sweet. Oh, uh, yeah, Ken was, nice. Ken was awesome to have as a guest. He was so nice. He's darling, I know. Just a sweetheart. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, okay, we have a question from Jason, and he asks, Hello, Melissa. Thank you for participating in this Q&A. You were obviously a huge part of why so many, including myself, enjoy this show so much. My question would have to be, what moment from the series do you think had the most impact on shaping Ginger into the character she ultimately became as the series ended? Hmm. I don't know that there was one moment. I would say there were a lot of great talk with Mom. They did a great job with those two characters just having some good heart-to-hearts. Her mom really being there for her when she fell down and helping her get picked back up and feel good about herself again. Mm -hmm. So I would say it was just kind of an overall thing. There wasn't one. All right. Uh, We have two more questions. Uh, We have one from Uh uh, Bursa Brea, and this person asks, Awesome! The voice of Ginger Foutley! My my question is kind of loaded, so feel free to take it how you will and answer it in general (laughs) or as detail as you wish. Uh, If the plug wasn't pulled and as told by Ginger, what direction would you have gone with Ginger as she was finishing high school and became an adult? Oh, gosh. So many directions. I, I don't even know. There'd be, I mean, there could be spinoffs. There could be, like, college life. It really could go in a lot of directions. But I do think music would still be a part of it. Yeah. I mean, throughout season three, she was with Orion, and they had the, the band. Um, yes. So, you know, throughout the wedding frame, they were still together. But when we saw the ending, she was with Darren. So maybe like during high school, she would be in the band with Orion and singing a whole bunch of songs. And Mm -hmm. maybe like along the way, maybe, you know, she has strong feelings for Darren again. And maybe they would end up being together. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Maybe Orion went off the deep end and got joined a boy band. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or maybe he was like, a, maybe he became like a like a manager for like a um, a rock band that pretty much went yeah. nowhere. And maybe there's like a Broadway musical about them or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. So yeah. Um, Let's see what we got. One last question. Uh, Goth Courtney. And uh, this person asks, Hi, Melissa. Here's a question for you. What was your original reaction to the episode Wicked Game? And was there going to be a follow-up episode to it? Did something got cut, canceled, or it wasn't aired? Wait a minute. Wicked Game? Yeah, Remind that's... me what that is. Okay, so um, the episode is about that Ginger... It's, it takes place right after Far From Home when Ginger comes back from the semester in the school and she uh-huh. starts dating Darren. And uh, Miranda starts spreading a rumor to Dodie and Macy that, oh, that means that with her being with Darren, she's going to leave you and never, and you're never going to come back. And so Dodie and Macy become jealous and Courtney oh, yeah. tells her that, oh, um, they're planning on breaking you guys up. And so Darren and Ginger listen on the phone about that Dodie and Macy is going to join up with Miranda and Mipsy to plan on breaking up with um, Ginger and Ginger and Darren's relationship and then she says I don't know if I could ever trust them again and she basically says I don't think we can ever be friends anymore and then the following episode the Easter ham they're friends again so it's like something was missing like did, how did Dodie and Macy get? Uh, how did Ginger, Dodie, and Macy get back together as friends when it clearly showed that, Gin, that Dodie and Macy were wanting to betray Ginger by by agreeing to Miranda to break up with Darren? Okay, I want you to hang on to this question and ask Eric because he, as being one of the writers, will know what happened there. Was there something? I agree. Like something's missing. Yeah, I think maybe, some, you know something what? I should have. I regret not asking Eric this. You know yeah. what? Maybe I'll email him, and maybe we'll get the answer that <laughs> get to the bottom. Yeah, I want to know to, exactly. I want to know. Can you show me? I want to know the strangers like me. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> uh, Tarzan joke. That's people. a good question. Tarzan joke. Okay, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add Casey back on the call. We're done with the spoiler questions. Oh yay! Hooray! I kind of want to know from some of your listeners, like, how did Ginger? affect their world you know like did they learn how to get through some of the tough things in school by watching oh we've received a lot of they feel encouraged oh we've received a lot of comments depending on what episode that they feel Mm -hmm. that ginger was able to help them in some way like when we had hello stranger you know like um her not Mm -hmm. having a father around 
Um, yeah. And, um, you know, we had, like, uh, the nurse's strike with Lois and Ginger feeling embarrassed that, oh, mom, why are you cleaning? You're not a cleaning maid. You're a uh-huh. nurse. So, you know, they were, like, relating uh-huh. to Lois regarding about, like, you shouldn't feel embarrassed about something because, you know, uh, the line was, they can't make me feel bad about it because I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. Like, I now remember somebody writing to me saying something so cool. If you listen to the podcast, I mean, I'm sure that you, you know, as soon as you're done with your bajillion things, up, yeah. then, you know, we do like uh, every month we read our, our comments from our listeners and um, they basically tell about their opinions on the episode and how much it affected them in some way, shape or form. So, yeah, a lot of people feel connected to all the characters. So neat. I remember one one person telling me through an email or something, Facebook maybe, like that she didn't know what to do when it came to inviting, should she invite both her mom and her dad to her graduation or just one or the other and she was more in touch with one than the other. And in the end, she just invited both because that's what Ginger did. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. That, that also happened to another episode much later on. But yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So... Uh, yeah, Casey, um, I, we only have one more question to ask. And, of course, this is the question that we always ask for all of our um, guests. Uh, but this time, Norbert asked this question. So he asks, um, Hi, Melissa. Sorry I can only ask one question. I get that you're super busy, but it was awesome for you to take some time out of your busy schedule to do this. You are a real gem. My question is, how do you see the legacy of As Told by Ginger more than a decade after its end? It still has a huge dedicated fan base to this day, hence why this podcast podcast even exists how do you Uh feel to know and see the impression of the show left on not just nickelodeon but children's tv in general oh i'm so touched i'm so honored to have been on a show like this and i think we all kind of knew as we were on it like wow this is a really special show this is really beautiful and i think that's why a lot of us are so bummed that it hasn't come back around like a lot of the shows have but it's it's wonderful and i think it was it was a show that really really touched my life as well because I got to relive a lot of those painful junior high years and this time I got to do it in a really cool way so it actually was very healing for me to do as well that's great um so yeah um I guess uh, Casey if you don't have any more questions I guess that's it right I think so. Thank you so much. We, uh, you're certainly a, a, a voice acting highlight of the show, and your your work is still ringing true 17 years later. So you should feel really good about that. Thank you. It's been a joy to work in this field for sure. I, I'm very, very blessed that I get to do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so thank yeah. you guys for being such beautiful fans. We well, love you all. <laughs> thank you. Beautiful. So, yeah, right before we go, um, two more things. Uh, First of all, uh, why don't you plug and promote your stuff and where people can find you at? Well, MelissaDisney.com is probably the best thing. And then I also teach voiceover as well. You can go on MelissaDisney.com. I have another one called LA Voiceover Academy. Yeah, so I teach occasionally and do some group stuff and do some privates. Um, And then I also am a singer-songwriter, so I have a couple albums out on iTunes. The latest one is called Love, and there's some fun songs on there, too. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, definitely. All right. And uh, one more thing, and I don't don't want to put Uh you on the spot, but I actually have... um, the words to either the Hello Stranger poem or the Copper Color Pony song. So what would you like to um, reenact as Ginger? (laughs) Uh... Copper colored ponies. All right, <laughs> let me just send you the let me just send you the link. I'm gonna email. I'm gonna send you the link right now. Remember, you'll have to sing along. No All worry, I will sing along. along. Don't, don't you worry, I will sing along. Even though I have a terrible sing singing voice, yeah, I'll sing it along with you. This is crazy to think that I'm gonna be singing this song. Let me see. Oh man, if I if uh, if if my 14 year old self can know that I did this, I would be. Oh, I found it. Okay. I would be crying. <laughs> yeah, I can you imagine? Yeah. All right. Uh, Open. Okay, so uh, whenever you're ready, I'll sing the lyrics, and then you can follow along with me. Okay, let's see. They're coming. They're coming. All right. <laughs> Literally, I was down to one percent on my phone. That's okay. <laughs> I just said something. All right. So okay, whenever... here we go. Okay, we're... <clears throat> here there we go. There were copper-colored ponies. There was air that smelled like rain. And the moon was out in daytime. When I first learned your name. Oh, when I first learned your name. Yeah. 
And and though the clouds quickly move in. Clouds. The clouds quickly. I'm trying to remember the melody. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> though the path looked overgrown. The time that, the time I, spent that I spent talking to you. Talking to you. Made me feel like I feel I was home. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay, next time we'll practice. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it, everybody, for this episode of We're in Between. Let us know in the comments below about your favorite moments featuring Ginger. Um, what was your favorite episode focusing on her? Or uh, let us know about other projects that Melissa has been a part of. So, yeah, that's it. Hope to see you around soon. And thank you for listening. Hey, hey.